Last year, the city of Boston was shaken when its annual marathon was tragically bombed, leaving three people dead and 264 others injured. The alleged mastermind behind the deadly attacks, Tamerlan Sarnaev, was killed in a shootout with Boston police. His little brother and alleged co-perpetrator, Joe Har, is now awaiting trial and potentially facing execution. But amidst the insanity ensuing from last year's horror, there was one story largely swept under the rug. The bizarre execution of a 27-year-old Chechen-American man named Ibrigin, Ibrigin excuse me, Tadashev. See, Tadashev was interrogated by state and federal officials at his Orlando apartment for four hours, about a month after the bombings about his alleged association with the Sarnaves. But before any connection was proven, he was shot and killed. First, the official FBI narrative said that he was in the process of writing a confession to a triple homicide completely unrelated to the Boston bombings, when abruptly he flipped out, pulled out a gun. Then the story changed to a sword. Then they said he threw a chair, then an entire coffee table, which they claimed struck one of the officials in the head. That's when law enforcement claimed Tadashev ran into the kitchen and armed himself with a metal broom handle. Well, the unfolding story quickly fell apart when they were forced to admit that he was completely unarmed. But being trained in martial arts, they ended up claiming that his body was the weapon and that he attacked them with the pole, thereby justifying the use of deadly force. However, mere days before he was killed, Tadashev had serious knee surgery that rendered him unable to walk without crutches. So it remains unclear how he was able, how he was able to pose a serious threat. In the end, Tadashev was shot seven times, once in the head. And unfortunately, we know more than little details about his death because the FBI blocked local authorities from releasing the autopsy report. Last year, I spoke with Ibrahim's wife, Reni Tadashev, about what happened and why she thinks her husband was executed. I do not know. I can't even say why. It was just... I, I don't really don't know. There was... If you saw the pictures, there was five dead, deadly shots. If they were trying to say there was a self-defense, they were trying to stop him, that is so unacceptable to how you stop the person. There is not a single shot in the arm, in the legs, anywhere. It was three in the heart, one in the liver, one in the head. So that's just a straight death. Indeed, it was deadly. And despite multiple investigations launched to get answers, an internal FBI review and a Florida state attorney recently cleared the FBI agent who fatally shot Tadashev of any wrongdoing. The Florida prosecutor's ruling stated that the actions of the special agent of the FBI were justified in self-defense and in defense of another. The other state trooper present at the time of the shooting stands in solidarity with the special agent, claiming that he was in fear of his life, that the shooting was indeed justified. What a shock. Well, over the last year, the FBI, Massachusetts, and the Florida state officials have kept the identity of those involved secret for fear of repercussions. Yet thanks to unredacted documents obtained exclusively by the Boston Globe, we can now identify the FBI agent who ended up executing Tadashev as Agent Aaron McFarlane. And wouldn't you know, McFarlane was an Oakland police officer before becoming a special agent. No wonder he shoots to kill. Turns out this guy has quite the controversial record in his short time on the OPD force. See, McFarlane worked with the OPD during the biggest scandal in the department's history. Between 2004, I'm sorry, between 2000 and 2004, according to the Boston Globe, Oakland fired four police officers who called themselves the Writers after prosecutors filed criminal charges against them in 2000 on accusations of beating and kidnapping people, making false arrests, planting evidence, and falsifying police reports. Now, McFarland testified in defense of the writers. When it came to light that he was also fraudulently filing police reports at the request of the main writers, he ended up pleading the fifth to prevent further incrimination against himself. But it turns out that he was in legal trouble also for committing the same types of acts as the writers. In 2003, McFarland was sued twice for his egregious behavior as an Oakland police officer. First, for beating both a man outside of a hospital and a witness who saw that beating and for falsely arresting that witness. Another case was a similar false imprisonment, imprisonment and unlawful beating. Sounds like a really, really great guy serving and protecting by singling out witnesses and beating the crap out of them. Good job. Well, after serving a long and hard four years on the police force, McFarlane complained of injuring his leg and ended up retiring with a hefty pension of more than $52,000 annually for the rest of his life. But apparently that injury didn't deter him from joining the FBI as a special agent. And besides the Tadashev killing, we don't even know what he's been up to for the last 10 years. 
According to Carol Rose, executive director of ACLU of Massachusetts, we still don't know what even happened, nor why the explanations from those who were present at the shooting have been inconsistent, suggesting at various times that Mr. Tadashev allegedly threatened agents, including with a knife, a pipe, a stick or pole, an agent's gun, the deceased's martial arts training, or even a samurai sword. Unfortunately, the investigators on the case weren't even able to interview McFarlane about what happened and simply had to make their ruling based on pre-written statements from the agent. This alone should prove the reports inconclusive and the investigation should be reopened. But don't hold your breath. According to the New York Times, through a FOIA request, between 1993 and 2011, FBI agents fatally shot about 70 subjects and wounded 80 others. And in every single case, the agent's use of force was determined to be justified. One thing is clear, though. When a federal agency coordinates with so many forces trying to suppress the truth and even the name of a public officer that works for us, usually there's something to hide.